Hi, my name is uh, Ton Antonio Lima. I was born in Senegal, uh, West Africa, and I have immigrated to the United States since I was 15 years old. But uh, being born in Senegal, Senegal being a country of 90% uh, plus Muslim, uh, I came from a Christian family. Um, my background basically is my parents are from an island called Cape Verde Island, which is next to Senegal. My parents immigrated uh, to Senegal in, 19, in the 1950s, 55 to be exact. Uh, Cape Verde was a Portuguese colony, and so during, you know, Portugal, when they uh, controlled Cape Verde, they basically uh, forced everybody, all the slaves who were supposed to be uh, converted into Christianity. You had no other choice, and in particular, the uh, Catholic religion. So I come from that kind of a background. And while in Senegal, I did all my education, secondary education and primary education in Senegal. Um, I went to school with Muslim students. Uh, some of my best friends actually were Muslims, but I didn't think much about it. Uh, my first impression of Islam was looking at these kids who were going to learn Quranic, uh, Quranic lessons, and it was kind of harsh because back home you had the teacher with a whip, and I definitely don't want to be, uh, you know, associated with that kind of schooling because even at school we we had corporate punishment, we, meaning that the teachers could hit you in elementary school if you didn't know your lesson correctly. So we, we used to have after-school Quranic school. First impression of a Quranic school is really strict back home because you had the uh, students who we call the Talibes, who basically, uh, you know, had to wear some kind of a long robe and have a certain crew cut, um, you know, and the teachers were very severe at the time. And as a kid, I... I was like, nah, I don't want to be part of this. So even though they had after-school classes for Quranic classes, I, I never, I never joined. Uh, it's kind of, nah, nah, this wasn't my type of thing. You know, Christianity was easier, more tolerant. I, that's what I was thinking at the time as a kid. Uh, but as time went on, like I said, I went to school with many, some of my best friends were Muslims. I mean, and we went, we were together from elementary, second grade, all of all the way to high school, um, or what you would call junior high school here. Um, but then, like I said, in, I immigrated to the United States at the age of 15, did my high school here. After I finished my high school, I did the military, you know. Uh, while I was in the military, I had time to read the Bible on my own, because there, <laughs> there was plenty of time. That's all you had in the Army. Had plenty of time. I read the Bible back and forth, and then I realized that the you know, Christian religion wasn't wasn't following exactly what the Bible said, because in the Bible it said that you're not supposed to eat pork. That was the first time that I actually saw that, you know, uh, that I realized that Christians were not supposed to eat pork. It was in the Bible. It was pretty clear in the Old Testament. But uh, what happened is that, uh, uh, you know, I started doubting. I started having my doubts about the Christian religion back then at that time after reading that part. Uh, asking myself why, why even though God gave the command not to eat pork that was prohibited for uh, for the followers of God at the time in the Old Testament, why is it that today it was okay? But then I was told uh, by one of the one of the brothers, as we call them, uh, that well, you know, John, one of the apostles, had a dream, and in his dream he he saw pork being there as a meal to be eaten, and for him, he interpreted it as uh, God sending him a message that it was okay to eat pork from then on. But then at the same time, I was, I had also read in the Bible where God said that his word will never change. His word is one from the beginning to the end. So how would that jive with, you know, uh, basically with with the word that God's word doesn't change? If he said, don't eat pork at the beginning, then... As I was saying, uh, you know, one of the contradiction was for me that they never answered that uh, people in the Christian religion could never answer is this inconsistency where on one hand God says pork should be prohibited. We sh as Christians, we're not supposed, not as Christians, but 
uh, in the Old Testament. Basically, the, God prohibited uh, pork, and then all of a sudden, in the Christian religion, you know, it became okay because of somebody's dream. You know, that just wouldn't set, settle with me because of the Word of God saying that my Word will never change. My Word is one, from the beginning to the end. And so, um, you know, and th and at the same time, they were preaching the uh, Trinity and all that stuff. So that's. Uh, that, that was kind of thing, one thing that was confusing for me, uh, you know, the, the Trinity, to accept the Trinity, the Son of God and all that stuff, and the Holy Spirit and all that stuff, all being part of God, just didn't make sense at the time. But I kept doing further research. I, I went and studied later on, and after I came out of the Army, I went on to study Buddhism. I read upon Buddhism, Judaism. Uh, I guess I was kind of soul-searching. And I'm looking for some kind of a meaning, and it wasn't until like uh, until my last year of uh, college that um, I was able uh, had the opportunity to learn about Islam in depth. Uh, whether some people say by accident, but as they say in Islam, Allah chooses you. You not you don't choose Islam. It's not you choosing Islam. So um, my last year, I needed one more course to graduate. And they had, and I needed a math course, but uh, thank God, alhamdulillah, uh, you know, I went to my uh, academic advisor and he told me that there was a course that I could take in lieu of math. I would have the same, I would get mm -hmm. the same credit. And it was a course based on Islam versus Western civilization. And the irony is that <laughs> the, the professor was Jewish, <laughs> teaching us about Islam. So... That, that that was another uh, kind of thing that made me step back a little bit, but it was interesting. I I went in and my the first day of the class, the thing that impressed me about my first lesson was reading the fact that in Islam, uh, it is a sin to uh, to lend somebody money and expect interest. Whereas on the other hand, all my life, all my adult life, I had learned that well, this was part of the you know. The business banks lend you money and then they have to uh, charge you interest. I mean, this was the way things went. Uh, but then at the same time, everybody complains about interest and you're paying more than what you're supposed to and all this stuff. But here came a word from Allah, uh, you know, that said that this was a sin. And to me, that struck me. That was the key word that basically made me want to learn more about Islam. And it took me about 10 years to uh, following, I used to follow, I guess, the Nation of Islam. I, I was impressed by Minister Farrakhan at the time, uh, the way he spoke and, uh, you know, uh, the way he, he addressed the issues of today related, relating to taking the Bible and the Quran and relating it to everyday's reality in America. And so that was my start. I was basically, uh, you know, attracted to Islam also by the ministry of uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan. And by following him, I kept getting deeper and deeper. And it, didn't, it took me until 1998 to uh, basically uh, convert to Islam. Because uh, in 1998 was when I, I realized that, yeah, it was time. And I had... Uh, there was an imam that came from Mauritania at the time, and he, and I knew a lady who was who was Muslim, and she told me to come and listen to this imam. So I went and listened to him, and he asked me if I wanted to convert to Islam at the time, if I accepted Allah, and then that's when, that's when I, you know, I came into Islam, and uh, thanks to that imam, uh, I was converted to Islam and got ra married right away, <laughs> right after that. And uh, ever since, it's been a blessing. So for me, like I said, Islam has been a revelation. I have learned a lot. I have grown a whole lot more through Islam. Uh, because in my culture, you know, the man dominated. And, you know, man did everything. Not Man didn't do everything, but uh, it was like we had the influence of Christianity where... In the Bible it says, woman, man is not made for woman, but woman for man. But when I learned about the Prophet Muhammad, how he served his wife, I was like, wow, I have been taught wrong. 
<laughs> you know, all my life I always thought that I was the man and I had to be act like a man, whatever that meant. If you imagine in that kind of society, that you know, uh, you know, a man had to be the man and the woman had to subjugate herself to to her husband and all these cliches. But yet, when I learned about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, you know, his character, that he helped his wife, that he was there, you know, even sawing her clothes, sawing her buttons, things like that. I realized, wow, this is, this is very humbling. This is very humbling. Because I learned about Jesus, but like I said, Jesus was more an equivalent of a superman. He walked on water, he did all these miracles, and so uh, he was deified. Uh, you know, people, that's why Christians believe that he couldn't be a man doing all this stuff. Whereas the Prophet Muhammad, being a prophet, was like everybody else. He was somebody, peace be upon him, who, who was humble, who showed humility, who was not caught up into the sexist society as we see it today. You know, even though it's amazing that Islam is being accused of being a sexist religion. Whereas, you know, if you go into Christian religion, right in the Bible, it says man is not made for woman, but woman for man. Uh, you know, um, that was really a, one of the highlights of my life. This, uh, the, you know, reading that, learning that the Prophet Muhammad himself was so humble. He was a man among men. He was a statement among statements. You know, that, um, but the fact that he, <laughs> that impressed me the most was basically the fact that Prophet Muhammad helped his wife, you know. And I became, because of that, I hope, <laughs> I became a better husband, you know. I learned to get off my male, whatever, chauvinistic, as they call it, ideology uh, by learning, you know, by following the example of the Prophet mm -hmm. and helping in the house more. Cleaning, cleaning, uh, you know, taking care of my kids better rather than leaving everything to my wife. Uh, Islam helped me to change my character. You know, it, it changed me a lot, a whole lot. Um, I and that's why I'm still in Islam, and that's why. And every day I learn. I keep learning uh, things. And when we get together on Sundays we have the Imam lecture and I also learn uh, and we are able to ask questions and inquire more about Islam. Uh, um, one of the, I guess uh, one of the things that worried me was when I converted to Islam was how would I announce it to my parents because you know we, I came from a Christian background um, and when I spoke to my mother, I sp first I spoke to my mother, and she was, she didn't put up too much obstacle. My mother was easier than my father. My father was, he uh, almost, you know, went out of his head. <laughs> I mean, he was like cussing, you know, saying, hey, what? What are you doing? We, you know, we've been Christian. But at the same time, he, even though he was Christian, I told him, I said, you, didn't, you don't practice it. You, you haven't read the Bible. I said, I have read the Bible. I have read it from one end to the other, and I've seen the controversy. And, and in Islam, uh, the Quran is straight. There's only one Quran, uh, whereas the Bible you have, uh, the Orthodox Christian Bible, which has 81 books. And then you have the, um, what you call it, the um, Catholic Bible that came next. There was a translation of the Orthodox Greek Bible, and the Catholics ripped off nine books from the 81, so the Catholic has like, I think, 72 or 73 books. I'm not sure exactly. So they took about nine books from the Holy Book, 